We are truly passionate about the African wilderness and protecting the African wilderness. And so what we've done is we've focused on iconic cats. And I know in the light of human suffering and poverty and even climate change, one would wonder, why worry about a few cats? Well, today we're here to share with you a message that we have learned from a very important and special character, this leopard. We found this leopard in a 2,000-year-old baobab tree in Africa, and uh, the same tree that we found her mother in and her grandmother. And she took us on a journey and revealed something very special to us. Her own daughter, eight days old. And the minute we found this leopard, we realized that we needed to move in. And so we basically stayed with this leopard for the next four and a half years. Following her every day, getting to know her, that individual personality of hers, and really coming to know her. Well, we certainly did spend a lot of time with her. In fact, more time than even her mother did. When her mother would go off hunting, we would stay and film. And early on, a lightning bolt hit a tree 20 paces away from us. It was frightening, and it showered us with leaves and the pungent smell. And of course, we were stunned for a while. But when we managed to get our wits about us, we looked at each other and said, my gosh, what's going to happen with that little cub? She's probably going to forever associate that deafening crash with us. Well, we needn't have worried. She came charging out of the thicket straight towards us, sat next to us, shivering, with her back towards Derek and looking out. And actually from that day on, she's been comfortable with us. So we felt that that day was the day that she really earned her name. We called her Lachidima, which means light from the sky. We're spending so much time with this leopard and getting to understand her individualism, her personal character, that maybe we were taking it a little bit far. We were perhaps taking her for granted and maybe she didn't like that that much. When this little cub saw that I had vacated my seat and climbed to the back to get some camera gear, she came in like a curious cat to come and investigate. It was phenomenal and we felt grateful that she trusted us to that extent. But at the same time, we were concerned that if she created this as a habit and jumped into somebody else's car, it might not turn out the same way. She might get shot for that. So we knew we had to react quickly. And the only way we thought we could is, without scaring her, is to try and assimilate a growl like her mother would make, a hiss and a sound. So Derek turned on the heater fan in the car. Very innovative. But really and truly, this was how this little leopard was displaying her individual personality. But nothing prepared us for what happened next in our relationship with her when she started hunting. And on this first hunt, we truly were excited. It was like watching a graduation ceremony. We felt like we were surrogate parents. And of course, we knew now that she was going to survive. But only when we saw the tiny baby baboon clinging to the mother's fur did we realize that something very unique was taking place here with Lachidema. And of course, the baby baboon was so innocent, it didn't turn and run. So what we watched over the next couple of hours was very unique. It was absolutely amazing when she picked it up to safety, protecting it from the, the hyena. And over the next five hours, she took care of it. We realized that we actually don't know everything and that nature is so unpredictable. We have to be open at all times. Okay, so she was a little bit rough. Um, <laughs> but in fact, what we were seeing here was uh, interesting because she is a cub wanting to play, but she was also a predator needing to kill and yet conflicted in some way because she was also an emerging mother. She had this maternal instinct. And so, this really took us to this new level of understanding that personality. 
And of course, through the night, they lay together, they ended up sleeping for hours. But I have to tell you, everybody always asks, what happened to the baby baboon? It did die. And we suspect it was from the freezing winter nights. So at this stage, I guess that we had very, very firm ideas on what conservation meant. We had to deal with these individual personalities. We had to deal with them with respect and celebrate them. And so we, we, with the National Geographic, formed the Big Cats Initiative to march forward into conservation, taking care of the big cats that we loved, and then had an opportunity to look back over the last 50 years to see how well we had all collectively been doing. So when Beverly and I were born, there were 450,000 lions, and today they're 20,000. Uh, tigers haven't fared any better, 45,000 down to maybe 3,000. And then cheetahs have crashed all the way down to 12,000. Leopards have plummeted from 700,000 down to a mere 50,000. Now in the extraordinary time that we worked with Lacodema, which is really over a five year period, 10,000 leopards were legally shot by safari hunters. And that's not the only leopards that were being killed through that period. There's an immense amount of poaching as well, and so possibly the same amount. It's simply not sustainable. There's a burgeoning bone trade. South Africa just released some lion bones onto the market. Lion bones and tiger bones look exactly the same. And so in a stroke, the lion bone industry is going to wipe out all the tigers. So we have a real problem here. No more so than the lions do, the male lions. So the 20,000 lion figure that you just saw is actually a red herring because there may be three or 4,000 male lions and they're all actually infected with the same disease. I call it complacency, our complacency, because there's a sport, there's an activity going on that we're all aware of, but we condone. And that's probably because we haven't seen it like we are today. And you have to know that when a male lion is killed, it completely disrupts the whole pride. A new male comes into the area and takes over the pride, and of course, first of all, kills all the cubs and possibly some of the females that are defending their cubs. So we've estimated that between 20 to 30 lions are killed when one lion is hanging on a wall somewhere in a far off place. So what our investigations have shown is that these lions are essential. They're essential to the habitat. If they disappear, whole ecosystems in Africa disappear. There's an $80 billion a year ecotourism revenue stream into Africa. So this is not just a concern about lions, it's a concern about communities in Africa as well. If they disappear, all of that goes away. But what I'm more concerned about in many ways is that as we de-link ourselves from nature, as we de-link ourselves spiritually from these animals, we, we lose hope. We lose that, that spiritual connection, our dignity, that thing within us that keeps us connected to the planet. Oh, and Lachadima? Well, we can report, in fact, that uh, we're grandparents. <laughs> Thank you very much.